الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فلنواصل المذاكرة في الفوائد التي أخذناها من الشيخ محمد بن رمزان الهاجري حفظه الله تعالى We continue a review of those benefits that we had taken from our Shaykh, Shaykh Muhammad Ibn Ramzan Al-Hajiri, Hafizullah Ta'ala. And we begin this evening with some questions, with some questions. What kind of perfume did the Shaykh pass around? The name of the perfume. Ah. Word al taif Word Taif, mashallah, mashallah. Where's that from? Taif. <laughs> Taif. Akbar. From Taif. What is Word? Hey, I have some for you. Since you got the answer, I already got some. Uh, this is Word Abiyad, which is the same, but Taif is more. Uh, the word ta- word taif is more uh, authentic and more uh, strong, but this is the same thing. Marikallah fiq. Word taif. What did he say about it? What is word? What is word? What is word? In the Arabic language, word. Who can help him? Huh? Rose. The word is the word is a rose. The word is a rose. So this rose, in, in general, they make they make perfume from the word, and it has a similar scent. But there's some that are different colors. Some of them are red. Some of them are white. Some of them are yellow. And and Taif is known for this particular type of plant, and it's known there that they make this specific type of perfume from that flower. So it became very famous and very well known in, in that region specifically. And they will sometimes use it by itself, and other times they'll place one or two drops of the word ta'if inside the oud, inside the oud, the natural oud, and then they will have this mix, something well known. He mentioned who, who are those who wear that or were famous for wearing it? The umara and the ulama and the ayan. Yeah, the 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 the, scholar, the the leaders and the rulers and, and the scholars, the leaders and the rulers and and the scholars, and if so, it's from the good way. It's from the good way that uh, a man he will wear a nice perfume whenever he comes out, preferably something that is good quality, something that is beneficial and not harmful. Sometimes the perfume is cheap, and somebody may put it on you or burn you. Or put it on you, and it you know, it, and it hurts you, and doesn't benefit you because it's not really that good quality. It's not really that good quality, and the like like this. So the perfume, something that a man he will pick, something that a man he will select. And we have seen uh, in previous classes together, there was one companion specifically that we spoke about that they knew whenever he came because of the perfume that he's wearing. Who was that? We had a daura about this for the youth specifically. Ah, uh, uh, we had a daughter, and we talked, we, and we did his biography for the youth. Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuma. Whenever he would come, the people would they would say that they knew that Abdullah ibn Abbas he had come through here because of the scent that he would leave behind in the streets and the likes like this. So this is something uh, that is good, and the angels they like to have a good scent. So a believer he will try. To have uh, cologne on, any perfume on, itar or oud or misk, misk, the musk, and the likes like this, or some type of, of good scent, some type of, uh, of good scent. Barakallah fikum. Tayyib, what is a tazkiyah? This was an important topic that was mentioned during the seminar. A tazkiyah. What is a tazkiyah? A tazkiyah. And we want the meaning that was referred to in the in the seminar. Our questions related to to the benefits that have proceeded. A tazkiya. Yeah. 
when someone mentions someone else in a good manner, meaning, meaning that someone will praise another person. Someone is it has the meaning of al madh al thana yani to praise another person. It's called a tazkiya. But also it's known as a recommendation. So it's a appraisal of, re- of recommendation that someone will mention another person in a good light so that other people will trust him. Someone will mention another person in a good manner, praising him for his religion, praising him for his knowledge, praising him for his manners, so on and so forth, so that other people will trust him and feel comfortable around him. So that other people will trust him and feel comfortable around him and feel comfortable taking knowledge from him specifically. And feel comfortable taking knowledge from him specifically. So at Tazkiyah, giving a Tazkiyah, this is something legislated. Something legislated? Is something legislated? Yes, it's something legislated. Who's the first one to write a Tazkiyah in Islam? أول من كتب تزكية في الإسلام أبالي أمار بن خطاب قد نفس النصف The first one to write Who's the first one to write Who's the first one Just answer the question Don't add to it Who's the first one to write a تزكية Umar ibn al-Khattab. Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiyallahu anhu, is the first one to write a tazkiyah. What is a tazkiyah? Huh? A, a, a recommendation. A recommendation for what? Here, a tazkiyah, recommendation not to get a job, not to get married. A tazkiyah could be for a job, it could be for a marriage. What is a recommendation? The, re- the first recommendation, what was it for? For knowledge. For knowledge. It was, a, it was for knowledge. Okay, so the first written recommendation in Al Islam was written by Umar ibn al Khattab. Who is Umar ibn Khattab? Who is that? Huh? He's, a, he's Khalifa to Abi Bakr. Al Khalifa al Rashid al Thani. He is the second of the rightly guided Khulafa. He is the Khalifa, the predecessor of Abu Bakr. Who is Umar? Who is Omar? This one thing. There's more to say. Who is Omar? We want to know who we're talking about. Who is Omar? 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 Who is a number of companions were given glad tidings of paradise by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam by name while they are alive walking on the earth. Ten of them were mentioned in one narration at one time. From those ten, Omar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu. So Omar ibn al-Khattab, he was walking on the earth while he had glad tidings and a promise from the Messenger of Allah that he is from the people of paradise. A glad tidings and a promise from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he is from the people of of paradise and likewise the brother Abu Damir barakallahu fi he mentioned as well that Omar also radiyallahu anhu he was known that his opinion and his thoughts in particular subjects and situations were in accordance with the revelation before it was revealed there are many circumstances many circumstances in the biography of prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam whenever Omar he would have suggestions or he have opinions and he would have ideas that he thought should be established, rulings and, and the legislation, so on and so forth, choices that should be done and uh, and affairs that should be executed in the ummah, and even legislation that should be established, laws that should be required and, and, and implemented. He had ideas like this and suggestions, and then later after those suggestions, the revelation would come in accordance with the suggestion and the opinion and the position of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. Radiallahu anhu. So from, from here they called him Al Muhaddith. Al Muhaddith. Al Muhaddith is a narrator of Hadith Al Muhaddith, the one who the one who is the one who is inspired. And he has a type of inspiration and a type of firasa. Firasa, what is firasa? Intuition. Fira, a type of intuition that he's able to to understand realities of things other people are not able to grasp. He's given success to, to, to know the right from the wrong uh, in, in, in a manner that is, uh, that is very beneficial. 
and easy for him. Radiallahu anhu. Who is Umar ibn Khattab? Who else? Uh, something else. Nam. His daughter Hafsa bint Umar ibn Khattab is the wife of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Is the wife of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So he's very close to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Who is Umar ibn Khattab? Radiallahu anhu. Nam. If there was going to be another prophet after the after the prophet, it would be Umar. Nam. Allah Akbar, Umar. He, along with Abu Bakr, they're the masters and the leaders of the elders of paradise of all of mankind, besides the prophets and messengers. What about the pathways? Nam. Farooq. His name is Farooq. What is why? Who, who is his? Why is his nickname, nickname Farooq? Because he 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 decides when he he's the, this, the determining factor between the truth and falsehood. Uh -huh. ما سلك عمر فجا إلا سلك الشيطان فجا آخر. That Omar he never took a pathway except Shaytan he'll go the other way. Shaytan is afraid of him. Shaytan is afraid of him. The devil will go the other way. This is Omar ibn al Khattab رضي الله عنه نعم. Allahu Akbar, that which indicates the closeness and the great love and companionship that he had with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that it continued even after his death and he was buried next to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after Abu Bakr. And, the, and even, even Aisha Radiallahu Anha, she recognized that right and she let him have her place. And Aisha, she was going to be buried there. She wanted to be buried there. She allowed for Omar to be buried there. And he, in this manner, no. He's a shaheed. He's a shaheed. Min al shuhada. Min al shuhada. He's from the martyrs, those who died in the cause of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allahu Akbar. Who was Umar ibn Khattab? Radiallahu anhu. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Mount Uhud shook at one time whenever the messenger was on that mountain along with Umar and Abu Bakr and Uthman. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, inna hadha, inna Verily this, this mountain loves us and we love it. And he mentioned that on the mountain, this mountain is, is martyrs, referring to, to Umar radiallahu anhu and Uthman. Naam. Allahu oh. Akbar Allahu Akbar In the hadith of Hudayfa radiallahu anhu About the fitin that's going to That's going to move like waves One of them is going to come and then believers are going to say Oh this is it, I'm finished I'm, t I'm finished, I'm wiped out And then it will go away and another one will come And make the one that's previously looked like it was nothing The trials are going to come, the trials are going to come But when was that going to happen? Not till after the death of Omar that Omar he was the doorway blocking that fitna from occurring, and it's not until he died that that door was opened. Allahu Akbar. This is, uh, this is from the best of mankind. What else? Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he said, Ma zilna izza mundu aslam Umar. He said, we continue to be having, having might and honor ever since Omar accepted Islam. And he, before Omar accepted Islam, they were scared, they were afraid. But whenever he accepted Islam, now they became strong, they're not afraid. They had might, they had honor. His Islam brought, his acceptance of Islam and embracing Islam brought strength to the religion. Brought strength and honor to the believers. Allahu Akbar. This is the example. Wallahi would hope that our Islam would bring benefit to the Muslims. We hope that our Islam will bring benefit to the Muslims. Some people, they accept Islam and they bring fitna to the Muslims. What do you have to believe? Omar, he accepted Islam. He brought strength and honor and might to the, to the Muslims by the permission of Allah Azza wa Jalla. What else? Hmm. He was stern against the people of innovation. He was stern. Listen to this word. He was stern against the people of innovation. Sabi, he was hitting him in his head. He asked him a question about some, uh, some, not, some uncommon words in the Quran. Some, some verses that are not clear in the light like this, and he's, he'll hit him in the head. 
and he and he and he reprimanded him and he imprisoned him and he silenced him and he reprimanded him over and over and over until he said, I repent. He said, Whatever was in my head before you have gotten it out, yeah, Amirul Mu'minin. It's gone out of my head now. And he did not allow for the people to introduce doubts into the Ummah. He did not allow that. He would stop that himself. He would stop that himself. Also, he used to go around the nighttime looking for looking for the, the widows and the orphans and feeding the poor and taking care uh, of the needy and the likes like this. This is Umar ibn Khattabi radiallahu anhu. Who's the most beloved person? Who asked the question? Man ahabu nasi laika ya Rasulullah. Who asked that question? Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu. He asked the question. What did he say? Who is the most beloved of the people to you, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What did he say? He said, he said Aisha radiallahu anha. He said, thumma man then who? Did he say Abu Bakr? <laughs> Abu Ha. He said her father. And he, keeping the reference to her. Keeping the virtue with her. <laughs> Abu Ha. Her father. And then Thumma Man. And then who? And he said, he said, he, yeah, Thumma Man. And then who? Umar ibn al Khattab. Whenever he said, after the after he said, Aisha said, Min al Rijal. From the men. He said, Abu Ha. Thumma Man. Said Omar ibn al Khattab radiallahu anhu radiallahu anhu. What else? Huh? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Wallahi, that's Azim. It's been described, we, t- we had taken previously in the interpretation of Abu Ali, Ar Riyahi, from the Tabi'een. He died in the year 93 or 94. He, he was asked about As-Sirat al-Mustaqim. What is that? He said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sahibahu min ba'dihi Abu Bakr wa Umar. The, the, the straight path, As-Sirat al-Mustaqim, it is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his two companions after him, Abu Bakr and Umar. So this is a great verse. Umar has been described as he is the straight path. He's the, what is the Sirat al-Mustaqim? The, he is the straight path. They didn't say what they were upon. He said them, the messenger of Allah. Is the straight path and his two companions after him, and his two companions after him, Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhum. We're getting an idea who we're talking about now. Ah. Uh huh. Allah akbar. From the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Omar, he told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I love you more than everything except for myself, O Messenger of Allah. Illa nafsi. He said, Hatta la ya Omar, Hatta akuna habba ilaki illa min nafsik. He said, No, 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 Omar, until I'm more beloved to you even than your own soul. He said, Allah ya Rasulullah, la anta habba, la anta habu ilaya hatta min nafsi. He said, he said, then now you immediately he said this, and then I am more beloved. Now you are more beloved to me, even than my soul. He said, Al An Ya Omar. He said, Now you have fulfilled faith, meaning affirming that he's telling the truth, affirming that he's telling the truth, and his love is sincere for the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah, 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 Allah, 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 Akbar, Sahih, Sahih, the, the um, uh, Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, radiyallahu anhuma, he was aware, the, the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa told him about the names of the hypocrites in Medina in, in, the, in those days. Hudayfa, he was aware, he knew those names. So after the death of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Umar, he went to Hudayfa and he said, am I from them? Wallahi, you're going to tell me, am I on the list? So many benefits from that. He's afraid. He was giving glad tidings that he's afraid maybe he could have slipped or he has done something wrong. He's afraid still after all of this glad tidings and the likes like this, he's afraid for his faith. He's still afraid for his religion. That's also showing the great status. But even greater than that, he said, no, and I'm not going to tell anything else. <laughs> no, you're not on there. And I'm not going to say anything else about that. So it's affirmed that he's not from them. It's affirmed that he's not from them. Yet he is afraid that he was from them. And he's afraid that for his religion and for his faith. And even after being given, being given glad tidings from the Messenger of Allah himself, وسلم, he did not become arrogant. He did not become hasty. He did not become boastful. He did not think he's better than others. He was not amazed by himself. I'm giving glad tidings or not. 
It was not like that. Rather, he was like, am I a hypocrite? Is my name on the list? Tell me. You have to tell me. You understand? This is the this is the Salaf al -Sadeh. This is the pious predecessors. Now, Allah Akbar. Even, even you know, he has so much love for the Ummah and so much love for the Muslims and so much love for establishing the rights of Islam that even whenever he was stabbed on his deathbed, he's coming in and out. Did the people pray? Did the people pray? He's coming in and out of the country. Did the people pray? And then even likewise giving advice to the young man to raise up his pants according to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam all the way until his very last breath. He's concerned for the Muslims and their well-being. Mm. Radiallahu anhu. Nam. Nam anhu wa anhu. That he is pleased with Allah and Allah is pleased with him. He is from those people that Allah is pleased with and that he is pleased with Allah Azza wa Jalla. Radiallahu anhu. Also, he's from the, the Muhajirun. He's from the Muhajirun. What you did he accept Islam? Ahsan. Who said that? Six. MashaAllah. Here you go. Here you go. It's the word. MashaAllah. Who knows some more benefits? That's it? Are we, we, we have an idea who we're dealing with now? Who we're talking about now? Huh? He's given the, the title Amir al Mu'minin. That's right. That's right. No one had that title before. Uh, Abu Bakr, he's called Khalifa to Rasulullah. Khalifa to Rasulullah. And Omar, he's called Amir al Mu'minin. Allahu Alam, Ahsanta. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Huh? The, dua, the, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he made dua for him to become Muslim. What was his dua? He made dua for Abu Bi'ahad al Umarain. Uh -huh. Well, I help Islam with one of the two Umars. And it was Umar ibn al Khattab radiallahu anhu that Allah had chosen and selected to aid Islam by way of Nam. Yeah, I answered the question a lot ago. There you go. Huh. Abu Jahal. Nam. Wallahu alam. We understand who, we have a good idea now who, who were this, what, what is the topic? What was the question? What was the first? What is the first handwritten Tazkiyah in Al-Islam? Who wrote the first handwritten Tazkiyah in Al-Islam? Who wrote, I'm going to say it again. Man kataba awla Tazkiyah in Al-Islam? Who wrote the first handwritten recommendation to take knowledge from someone in Al-Islam? Omar ibn al-Khattab. Radiyallahu anhu. We know who he is now. We remember who he is now. We remember who he is now. There's no doubt about his status, his rank, his knowledge, his understanding, his position, his clear closeness, that he's beloved to Allah, Allah is pleased with him. All of these affairs, his understanding of the religion. Who is the first one to receive the Tazkiyah? Abdurrahman ibn, ibn Muljim. Abdurrahman ibn Muljim. On the first night, things were going so fast, my tongue said Abdullah ibn Muljim. But my mind says Abdurrahman ibn Muljim. And I would not have known had not been for my brother, Abu Hudayfa, he told me, Jazakallah khaira. Jazakallah khaira. Abdurrahman ibn Mulajim. He's well known. Sometimes, wallahi, when you're thinking fast or you're moving quickly, your tongue says things you don't even realize or know. And you think that you said one thing, but you don't know that you said something else. Wallahu al-musta'an. Nas'alallah azza wa jalan yasturuna jameean bi sitrihi al-jameean. Abdurrahman ibn Mulajim. Who is that? What do you know about Abdurrahman ibn Mulajim? He was a hafiz of the Quran. He memorized the Quran. Who did he learn the Quran from? Huh? From, from the companions. He learned that from the companions. The companions in those days like Omar and like Ali and Uthman. They're the ones, Ibn Masud, they're the ones carrying the Quran. They're the ones that the, the, the Ubay ibn Kab, Zayd ibn Thabit. The likes of these companions, they're the ones that the Tabi'un they're learning from. They're the ones that the Tabi'un they're learning from. He memorized the whole Quran from the companions themselves, those who transmitted the Quran to the Ummah. Okay. Who were his teachers? Sahaba, companions. Abdurrahman ibn Muljim. Who's Abdurrahman ibn Muljim? Where did he go? He went to Egypt. He went to Misr. Who sent him to Misr? Who was in, who was in Misr? Amr. 
Ibn al-As radiyallahu anhu. He was the wali. He was the Muslim ruler of uh, of Egypt. Of Egypt. Who sent him there? Omar ibn Khattab. Why did he send him there? To teach the people what? The Quran and the deen of Allah. To teach them the deen of Allah. To teach them the Quran. He was sent there as uh, as a teacher from Omar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu. What happened when he got there? What, what, who remembers something from the letter? Uh huh. Ahsanta Ufirukum ala nafsi. He said, Omar, he said, This man I'm sending you, I, I, I'm, I'm showing preference to you over myself. I would, I, I would love to keep him with me, to benefit from him. With me, I would love to have him close to me, but I'm showing even preference over my own self, over my own self for you, and I'm sending him to you. And he meaning take care of this man. This is somebody who's close to me, somebody who's dear to me, somebody I honor and respect. Do not disrespect him. Do not disrespect him. Make his house, make, make, give him a, a, a good house, a nice place. Make his living space easy. Make everything good for him. Make it close to the masjid. This is what he's ordered. Huh? Make his home nice and make his home close to the masjid and the like this so that he can come easy and he can spend his days teaching the Quran. This is was the advice. What what happened? There's some details maybe that were not mentioned, but Nam. What happened? If we read in his biography, we'll find that he had a neighbor that was from those who had a hand in helping murder Uthman. From the from his neighbors was a man who had a hand in helping them helping kill this man or the Allah Allah knows best what happened to him. He started huh? three, one from three, or huh? Sitting with him. He started sitting with the wrong people. He started sitting with the wrong people. He started taking knowledge from the wrong source. This this point right here is of utmost importance. This point right here is the summarized answer for why people spin around in the masjid, say who 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 who. Why people uh, ha, 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 dancing like this? Why are they who ha, ha, doing this all time? Why are they doing that in the masjid? How did that happen? This is the, the answer here. Likewise, summarize. And how did somebody ever have the? How would somebody ever put a bomb on their chest and blow it up in the masjid and say Allah Akbar? How? How could ever somebody go into the market with a gun and shoot people in the mall? They're just hanging out, buying stuff. How? How? How did all this happen? How did all this happen? How did they start having birthday parties? Birthday? How did they? They said they all stand up. All of a sudden, they start shaking the hand in the air, and they claim that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam shaking their hands. How did all this happen? Uh huh. Ahsent. He sees the white neck and red. Why though? You're right. We want to take it all. We want to. I want to hit the nail on the head, and it's that they all took knowledge from the wrong place. They took knowledge from the wrong source. They took knowledge from the wrong source, from the wrong people, until they start saying who, 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 until they start spinning around in circles, until they're dizzy, and then until they until they start doing all of these athkar this way. They started until they started having birthday parties, until they, until they started blowing themselves up in the mansion, until they started. They took knowledge from the wrong source. So if anybody would like to be like that, to go astray, to become a dog from the hellfire, or be from the extreme Sufis, or to worship graves, or to have doubts in their religions, or to be misled, or, or to be used or abused, then let him just take knowledge from anywhere. It'll, it won't be long. It won't be long. If somebody would like to be confused in their religion, to not know the, the, right, the right way from the wrong way, to be, have doubts about the methodology of the Salaf, to have doubts about Al-Qaeda, to have doubts about the creed, to have doubts about the rulers, to have doubts about the, the companions. If anybody would like to have that, just start taking knowledge from anywhere. Go to any website then. It will happen quick. You, you'll get what you're looking for. Confusion. Confusion and chaos and misunderstandings and doubts. They come like this by taking knowledge from the wrong source. Whatever, whatever it may be, sitting in the gatherings, reading in the websites, reading in the books, reading in the text, or listening to the audios, or listening to the people's speech, listening to the lessons, and, and any is that it goes back to taking knowledge from the wrong source, from the wrong source. So Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim, he started taking knowledge from the wrong source. He started taking knowledge from the wrong source until he murdered the best man on earth on that day. 
is that he murdered the best man on earth on that day, Ali ibn Abi Talib and declaring him to be dis to be disbeliever, doing that for the sake of Allah. He killed him in his mind for the sake of Allah. He killed him in his mind for the sake of Allah. We understand this? Mm -hmm. This is... Uh, I, I don't know about Uthman, but the, his neighbor had taken, his neighbor, whenever he moved to Egypt, the, uh, a neighbor that, that that he's around, this is mentioned in Sirah Lam al by Dhahabi. There was a neighbor, I forget his name at this moment, and his neighbor was from those who aana ala qatli Uthman, who helped kill Uthman, who helped kill Uthman. So no doubt, I mean, this is, Obviously, he learned from the originally. He learned from the right sources. So, some there, some along the way, something happened. Along the way, something happened. What happened? The Sheikh he clarified what happened. Either mujarasa or sema or qira'a. Either he started reading, or listening, or sitting with the wrong people. Well, here's an indication: the fact that it's mentioned that his neighbor was from the from the Khawadij who helped kill. Him. In any case, he was affected by some outward. By, by, by from some outward source, some external source, until he had become completely misguided. Until he had become completely misguided, and this, this is what had occurred. This was not my whole point for mentioning this. My whole point is about what? The Tezkiyah. My whole point is about what? About the Tezkiyah. So who was the first, what was the first written Tezkiyah in Islam? Who was it from and who was it for? It was from Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu and Who was it for? Abdurrahman ibn Muljim. Abdurrahman ibn Muljim, he killed the Khalifa al-Rabi'. He killed the fourth Khalifa. He killed the cousin of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa declared him to be, to be a disbeliever with the Quran that he learned and memorized from the companions. And, and his status and his acceptance amongst the, the Muslims came by way of the praise of Omar. We see that the contrast here. And if this person here is praising someone, the other person here is being praised, and this is the outcome of things. This is the outcome of things. What do we learn from this? What do we learn from this? There, there are great lessons that we must learn from this. There's foundations and fundamental principles that are related to La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, that are related, that, that, that are understood and derived from this. And we see that, that the true understanding of that clearly. And many people today, even those who ascribe to Salafiyah, they have deficiency in that. They have deficiency in that. Huh. Uh -huh, that's one benefit. Whoever his deeds will not recommend him, then his recommendation from the people will never benefit him. The true the true tazkiyah, the, the true tazkiyah is from actions. From actions. The tazkiyah that's written or mentioned by somebody, this is uh, this is a good sign. This is called a, a karina. It's not something that's relied upon because somebody is only going to speak from what they know and what they see, what they know and what they see. And no one knows the unseen except for Allah. Nobody knows these affairs except for Allah, except for Allah. And the revelation, the revel the revelation is cut off at the time after the death of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So the true tazkiyah comes by way of action. The true text here comes by way of action. If a person, his actions outwardly and his manners and his, his statements and the benefit that he brings to the people outwardly is good. Along with that, the people praise him. This is called light upon light. This is called light upon light. But if somebody outwardly praises somebody, but then we see from their statements and their actions contrary to that, troubles and trials and fitna, lowly manners, bad speech, backbiting, car carrying tales, or robbing people or cheating people or deception or playing with words, playing with words, saying one thing and making people think something and doing something else and, and playing games like this and playing with money is missing, all these types of things. Now, no, that is key or not. We will not be fooled by that. We should not be fooled by that. I've heard from some of the Mashaykh that at one time some students from India that came to Sheikh Ibn Baz, Rahimahullah, and they asked him for a tazkiyah. They're asking him to write them tazkiyah. So one of the students, they said, Sheikh, how come these people coming from India like this, asking you for to write them some recommendations? Why, 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 why are they doing that? He said, He said, because their actions do not recommend them. Their actions do not qualify them. So they are in need of someone to qualify them.
they want to move something they want to do something and they want to they want to step up for something but their deeds do not bring them to that level so now they're looking for the other way they're looking for somebody to praise them you understand this is something very 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 important the tazkiyah is important in islam it's a part of the deen having ijazah for example uh, he had ijazah the tazki, he had ijazah you know this right abdul rahman ibn mulzim he got ijazah from who ijazah with, with the quran from the from from the companions from the companions from the companions but that did not benefit him whenever he deviated and went astray but what do you say now you say somebody said wait a second omar he's He's this and he's that and he's this and he's that. We just spent 20 minutes talking about Omar. We could have kept going. Radiallahu anhu. He's this and he's that and he's this and he's that. He's the best friend. He's here. He's his, his daughter. He's, he, he, he was in accordance with the revelation so many times. He was right when others were wrong. Yeah, but what happened here? Uh, he doesn't know in the future. But the, the, what is the principle that we want to take from this? Allah, Akbar, Allah guides and misguides whomever he wants. So the point is, what? What do we benefit? If he can go astray like that, what about us? Okay, that's very, no doubt, we should be afraid. If Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim, who was learned from the companions, and he was praised by Omar in this manner, went astray, then we could easily go astray. Ya muqallib al qulub, ala dinik. Uh, Omar himself is afraid to go astray. Hmm. We want to relate this to, to to events that we live in our life. We want to we want to have an application. We want to under the benefit, the, the knowledge that we give these benefits. We want to be able to use them in our life. Huh. The one who is alive is not safe from trials. Uh, what else? If you oppose the way of the Sahaba, you go astray. If you oppose the way of the Sahaba, you will go astray. Ahsant. Now what else? He didn't take the means of safety and savior. Any holding fast to any of the good company. And being conscious where he learns from. And, what he's, and who he listens to. And what he reads. Now, the, the recommendations of the scholars is not absolute. The scholars, they speak on behalf of what they know. Somebody could easily display something to a person and behind closed doors display something else. The scholars are not infallible. The scholars are not infallible, especially when it comes to praising people. Many people, they have appraisal from this scholar or that scholar and their actions do not praise them. Sheikh Adabani, rahimahullah, he praised a number of people, students of knowledge, and after he died, they're not upon what he praised them about. Other people, they've been praised in recent history, and just after that, they're locked up in prison until this day. Praise for their manhaj. But he's locked up because of making opposition to the manhaj. Ah, the scholars, they're not infallible in these affairs. So we should not think that just because the sheikh praised somebody, that means that that person is absolutely 100%. Whether that's a good sign, and we accept that in general, but if at any time that person starts to show us contrary to that which he was praised about, we will not we will not be deceived. We'll not be deceived by by the praise of somebody. For example, if there is a scholar who says so and so, he's the most knowledgeable to all of you. And then we look at that person and we know that he never ever left this country to go seek knowledge. Or he himself, he never ever studied and sought knowledge. And we know that because he talks to us and he's not strong in this science or that science or that science. And he, and he never studied ever uh, any for a period of time. And everybody knows that. So uh, what do we say? They, they, we say the scholars that he's saying what he thinks. He thinks good. Many times, you know how it happens? Because people around the scholars, they say so-and-so is good. And then so-and-so is good, so-and-so is good. And then the scholar, he says, so-and-so is good. Be based upon the people that he trusts and relies upon. The point is, yes, if the scholars, they praise the people, alhamdulillah, this is a good sign, but this is not an absolute thing. We should not be deceived by it. Many people in these days, in these days, in the last 10, 15 years, they've been misusing Tazkiyat. They've been misusing Tazkiyat. They're going around getting ways, and they're either, either directly or indirectly. 
and they make big flyers and then they say shake and they put the name shake in front of somebody's name and then they say the student of so-and-so and then they say the 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 tesquia from so-and-so like this and then it runs and then later on those people take over and now there's all types of trouble and fitna and trials and the salafis are divided because of tesquia and then some people they say oh he doesn't have other people they go to extremes oh he doesn't have a tesquia but he's been teaching for 15 years 15 years calling to the sunnah no one has ever seen him oppose the sunnah or oppose the aqidah rather he's calling to the sunnah he's calling to the aqidah he's uh, a salafi he, he's helping the people they're benefiting from him and, and, and all of this great benefit for 10 15 years and then somebody can, oh he doesn't have a tiskia but then whenever somebody says actually he does have a tiskia you just didn't know him and he doesn't like to display it to people and they say oh well he doesn't have a tiskia from sheikh so and so it doesn't stop uh, if the if the hawa takes over, there's no way out. The issue of the tazkiyah is very important. Tazkiyah is legislated in Islam, and they're beneficial. But it's not something that you just rely upon absolutely. Anybody who has a tazkiyah, you have to believe and take everything he says. And anybody who doesn't have a tazkiyah, you can never benefit him in life. And even the tazkiyah, they come in many different ways. The people of knowledge, like Sheikh Fuzan, I heard myself. They mentioned that having uh, uh, having a shahad, a diploma from a, from a prestigious Islamic university is a type of tazkiyah. But besides, to have it from, 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 from the mashaykh is a tazkiyah. To have qualifications that are certified from these institutes that are proper and upright is a tazkiyah. Is a tiskiya. No doubt the, the origin is that one of the people of knowledge, they will praise a person. But the people of knowledge, they're not able to know everybody. They don't know everybody. They're not even to, not everybody can go to Saudi Arabia and get a tiskiya from Sheikh So-and-so. Especially whenever there's many reasons why this would happen likewise. So the point is that Umar al-Khattab, he gave Abdul Rahman ibn Mujim a tiskiya. And that meant he killed Ali. Radiyallahu anhu. Benefit from that. Benefit from that. Don't go to extremes. I'm not trying to go to extremes. There's a middle path here. There was another man who was mentioned. This one, Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim, he was Hafid al Quran. There was another one, Kana Hafidah, a Sunnah. Somebody who memorized the Sunnah. Who was he? What was his name? Ah. Ah. Imran ibn Hittan. Imran ibn Hittan. Imran ibn Hittan. He also was from the Tabi'een. I have here Seer Alama Nubala by Al Hafid al Dhahabi, volume number four. Volume number four. This is about the biographies of uh, of the people of knowledge, the noble and the likes, and included amongst them others. And this is volume number four on page 214. Al Dhahabi, he says, Yamran ibn Hittan Kha Dal Ta. What's that mean? Imran ibn Hittan, that's his name, huh? Kha dal ta. What's that mean? Kha Sahir Bukhari. Dal Sunan Abi Dawood. Ta Jami' Tirmidhi. These are the scholars who narrated this man's narrations. His narrations are collected in Sahir Bukhari. His narrations are collected in Sunan Abi Dawood. His narrations are collected in Jami' Tirmidhi. Imran ibn Hittan. He says, Ibn Zabiyan al-Sadusi al-Basri min a'yan al-Ulama lakinnahu min ru'us al-Khawarij lakinnahu min ru'us al-Khawarij He mentioned his name and his lineage and, and, and his ascription as Sadusi to the tribe al-Basri from the land and he's from the well-known people of knowledge min a'yan al-Ulama He's from the well-known people of knowledge lakinnahu min ru'us al-Khawarij but he's from the head of the Khawarij So he was a person of knowledge He's from the well-known people of knowledge, but he was from the heads of the Khawarij. From the heads of the Khawarij. He said, حدث عن عائشة وأبي موسى الأشعري وابن عباس رضي الله عنهم. He narrated narrations, and these are his shuyuk, his teachers. He narrated from Aisha, and from Abu Musa al-Ashari, and from Ibn Abdullah ibn Abbas رضي الله عنهم. These are who he took narrations from. This is who he learned hadith from. You understand? Rawa and who Ibn Sirin, Wakatada, Wayahya ibn Abi Kathir. His students who narrate who, who narrates from him, Ibn Sirin. Who's that? Muhammad Ibn Sirin. When did he die? 110. Like Hassan al Basri. Qaitada, who's that? Qaitada ibn Di'ama as Sadusi. He's from the same Al Basri. He's from the same land. He died in 117. Wayahya ibn Abi Kathir. Yahya ibn Abi Kathir, 
He died in the year 132. All of these are from the best of the scholars of hadith. All of these are from the best of the scholars of hadith, his students. His students. Qala Abu Dawood, Abu Dawood, he said, Laysa fi ahl al-ahwa asahu hadith min al-khawarij. Thumma dhakar Imran ibn Hattan. That Abu Dawood, he said that there's no one from the people of desires who their narrations are more authentic than the khawarij. Because the khawarij, they did not believe in lying. Lying for them was a major sin. Lying for them was a major, was a major sin. Listen here, he says, Qala al-farazdaq. Who is al-farazdaq? Al-Farazdaq, he died in 110 also, like Ibn Sirin and Hassan al-Basri. Al-Farazdaq, he is from the well-known poets, from the best and the most eloquent of the Arab in his day, from the Tabi'een. He's well-known, you will find his names mentioned in the books of Lugha. When you study Lugha, you'll find his position, you'll find his poetry, you'll find uh, his statements with regards to uh, the Arabic grammar and the Sarf and the likes like this in his poems. And he's well-known for his, his strength and his eloquence in the Arabic language. Listen to what he says. He says, Imran ibn Hittan, من أشعر الناس من أشعر الناس لأنه لو أراد أن يقول مثلنا لقال ولسنا نقدر أن نقول مثل قوله He said that فرزدق, يعني this person right here when we talk about the Arabic language and, and eloquence and balagha and, and the like he's at the head of them from the tabi'een He said, Imran ibn Hittan he is the, he, he has the, the, he is the best of the people in, in poetry He's the best and the strongest of the people in poetry. And this is because if he wants to, if he wanted to say poetry like us, he could do it. But if we want to say poetry like him, we cannot do it. We cannot do it. And he, meaning that he's what? He's eloquent. He's got speech. And he's able to talk. This is also from the traits of the people of innovation. Many times you have to watch out. They got the gift of gab. They have eloquent speech. They're able to make you think that the white napkin is red. They're able to make you think that the sky is green. They, 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 if they, they have, they're able to play with words and speak fluently and eloquently and change your mind. And change your mind. This is from the, the ways of the people of innovation. It's mentioned here that Ibn Sirin. Ibn Sirin, he says, قَالَ تَزَوَّجِ Imran خَارِجِيَّةً Tazawaja Imran Kharijiyatan. Imran he married a Kharijiya, a woman from the Khawarij. Imran he married a woman from the Khawarij. Waqala and he said, Sa'arudduha. Waqala Sa'arudduha. He said, I'm going to bring her back to the Sunnah. He married a woman from the Kharij saying, I'm going to bring her back to the Sunnah. I'm going to bring her back to the Sunnah Dahabi. He says, Rahimallah, Qala fasarafatu ila madhabiha. Fasarafatu ila madhabiha. So she, so she redirected him and she, she turned him into her methodology, her school of thought. Meaning he was affected. He was affected. He was affected. He was affected. His, Aisha taught him the, the Sunnah. Abu Musa taught him the Sunnah. Abdullah ibn Abbas taught him the sunnah. Anhum. The one who's narrating this story now, his great student, Muhammad ibn Sirin, the very first to ever start saying, no, his narrations don't accept them. He's a liar. He's weak in his memorization. From the very first to do that, Muhammad ibn Sirin, the one who's narrating this about him. And that was from his students. But listen to what happened to him. Listen to what happened to him. He married, he married a woman from the Khawarij. From the what, did, what, did what did he say? I'm going to change her. I'm going to call her to the sunnah. I'm going to help guide her. I'm going to give her advice. Like this, any, And uh, she changed him and turned him into a Khadiji. Into a Khadiji. So the point is now that, how was he affected? How was he affected? Hmm. The Mujalisa. The Mujalisa. He had the, the best of students. He learned the Sunnah from those who narrated the Sunnah. He learned the Sunnah from those who learned the Sunnah from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Just like Abdul Rahman ibn Mulajim, he learned the, the Quran from those who learned the Quran from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But what was it about Imran ibn Hattan? What is the relationship between the two of them? Huh? No, no. The, the, between between Imran, what is the relationship of Imran ibn Hattan huh, to Abdul Rahman ibn Mulajim? Huh? They, they both learn from the Sahaba, the sources are one, but they have a direct relationship to the issue that the Shaykh he mentioned. No. Huh? Yeah, what was his relationship to Abdul Rahman ibn Mulajim? Huh? He? 
He praised him. How? He wrote a poem. He wrote a poem praising him. He wrote a poem praising him. He says, وَمِنْ شَعْرِهِ فِي مَسْرَعِ عَلِيًّا رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ يَا ضَرْبَةً مِنْ تَقِيًّا مَا أَرَادَ بِهَا إِلَّا لِيَبْلُغَ مِنْ ذِي الْعَرْشِ رِضْوَانًا إِنِّي لَأَذْكُرُهُ حِينًا فَأَحْسِبُهُ أَوْفَ الْبَرِيَةِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مِزَانًا أَكْرِمْ بِقَوْمٍ بُطُونُ الطَّيْرِ قَبْرُهُمْ لَمْ يَخْلِطُوا دِينَهُمْ بَغْيًا وَعُدْوَانًا سبحان الله This is what he said after he killed, after Abd al-Rahman ibn Mulajim, he killed Ali radiallahu anhu. Like the Shaykh, he said, مَا انتهى مَا انتهى هنا It didn't stop yet. It even continued till some of the students of knowledge were affected. Do you heard the words the Shaykh is using? حَتَّى تَأَثَرَ بَعْضُ طُلَّابِ الْعِلْمِ To some of the, pay attention, يَا طُلَّابِ الْعِلْمِ Some of the students of knowledge, they were affected. And from those students of knowledge, Imran ibn Hittan, until he defended Abdurrahman ibn Muljim, making these lines of poetry. Making these lines of poetry, praising him, believing, and he, to summarize what they mean, is that this man, he went out seeking the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal, and that he doesn't think anything except that he's the best of all mankind, and he has the highest status with Allah Azza wa Jal, and that he is amongst those people, Abdurrahman ibn Muljim, he's amongst those people that the, the bellies of birds are their graves, meaning that he's in Jannah. And he liked the, 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 of the martyrs. He, was, he died as a martyr. And this is, what the, this is what he wrote about him in defense of him. He said that, and he said, and they're from those people who did not mix their religion with transgression, uh, with transgression and, and, and evil. And he, with, with, with violation, violating the limits and transgression. And he violated the greatest limits. And he transgressed the greatest right on the, of the people on that day. The right of Ali ibn Abi Dhalim. So this was Imran ibn Hittan. So what do we benefit from this? Hafid al-Qur'an, Hafid al-Sunnah. Memorize the whole Qur'an, memorize the Sunnah. His shaykh, his, they, they, they're shaykhs, their mashaykh are from the Sahaba. They, not, only are they, not only did they learn from the Sahaba, but the Sahaba praised them and told, take knowledge from them. And then in the end, what happened to them? No one is safe. Barakallahu feekum. May Allah give us a good ending. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.